we've seen that the first derivative can be interpreted as a coefficient of first order variation. This is the idea that we've been working with for the past few chapters. But now, now it's time to turn to the higher derivatives. What about them? We're going to begin thinking in terms of the notation that we use. Consider a function f and its first derivative, f prime. Now we can keep going. We could talk about the second derivative, which we will sometimes call f double prime. If we need to move to the third derivative, I suppose we could call that f triple prime, and then the fourth derivative, f quad prime, and then we keep going, we keep going. This gets a little ridiculous. It's best to avoid this prime notation unless it's really a very low order derivative. So what's the alternative? Well, it is often much better to use the notation df dx for the first derivative. This tells you explicitly what variable you are differentiating with respect to. Now, this is much better than prime notation, but it does get a little cumbersome in higher degrees. The second derivative is d squared f dx squared. The third derivative, d cubed f dx cubed. The fourth derivative, the fifth derivative, these increase those exponents. Now, beginning calculus students often wonder, why do the exponents work the way they do? Why is it that in the numerator, it's in front of the d, in the denominator, it's in front of the x? Why is that? Well, the reason for this is because because of the differentiation operator. This notation comes from the algebra of operators. We will find it convenient many times to explicitly call out the differentiation operator and call it capital D. In this case, D is the differentiation operator D by DX. If you don't really want to specify what you're taking a derivative with respect to, what that underlying variable is, then just using a capital D, very, very nice. Now, what do I mean when I say that this is an operator? Well, an operator is really a function on functions. This differentiation operator takes in a function f of x and returns another function f prime of x. It's not giving you a number at a specific point. It is giving you a function. Now, this is notation, but it's very convenient notation for working with higher derivatives. Why? Because you go from f to the derivative df to the second derivative d of d of f, which we write algebraically as d squared, the third derivative d cubed of f, etc., etc. So there's a sense in which we're actually taking powers of this operator. d squared is an operator that takes in a function f and returns the second derivative. Now, this is just notation, and it's simply convenient. There's not so much stuff going on with this capital D. But this is really more than just convenience, as we will see later when we spend more time thinking about differentiation as an operator. But for now, what I want to turn to is the question of so what? What does it all mean? Why do we care about higher derivatives? Are these things meaningful? Are they physical? Well, Let's think. Let's turn our attention to a couple of explicit examples where higher derivatives show up and they have some specific meaning in order to help bolster our intuition about derivatives.